Romans 8, 9 through 11. And if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. I'm going to be reading all my scriptures today out of the, or out of the NIV, but um, I'm going to kind of interchange and I'll do translation with the C, uh, SV as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Derek. So praise the Lord. Okay. I uh, ask you guys to turn there now. I got to get there. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I love you too. <laughs> so, you know, I, this week I, my off, my Sabbath day is Friday and Friday is a day that I just take to spend time with God and just to listen to him and allow him to pour out in me and just to relax. But this Friday, I didn't get that opportunity. I had an emergency come up here at the church, so I spent the day here at the church, and um, you know, which is a great thing, because praise God, we have a church, right? But it's just kind of threw me off, so I, was, um, I didn't get to do my normal, but I just want to say that when God gives you... Um, when he gives you a revelation to take a Sabbath, make sure you take a Sabbath. That's a time of rest and listening to him. So um, if I sound a little tired, pray for me. Don't pity me. Pray for me. Amen. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But I uh, will get that time next Friday in Jesus name. So praise the Lord. So let's see here. Um, eight. Romans 8, 9 through 11. I tell you, I don't know who's making these, who's printing these Bibles now, but they're printing this, this they're printing it smaller. <laughs> praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It's not me. <laughs> Come on, let's, um, let me um, find this here. I'll do it on my phone, and that way I can magnify the words. <laughs> so praise the Lord. You guys doing okay this morning? Praise the Lord. Romans 8. See, the one thing about it is, being the pastor, you guys have to wait on me. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, here we go. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Let me say this again. Because of his spirit who lives in you. Do you believe that the Bible, what the Bible says about you? You didn't sound... You, that didn't convince me. Do you believe what the Bible says about you? Yes. Amen. If the word of God made a direct statement describing you, would you receive it, believe it, and act on it? Would you be tempted to say, you know, I have all of this stuff going on in my life and, you know, I don't know what to do with it. Jesus just does not understand. Would you be tempted to say that? Would you be tempted to say, I know what the word of God says, but this is different. My situation is different. Jesus can't handle my situation. Would you be tempted? And if you are, my reply to you would be that no one and no situation is outside of the principles laid down by the word of God. Amen. That you should receive. That you should believe. And that you should act on. Amen? Amen. However deep your suffering may be, Jesus is greater. However the struggles may be, he's there. However big your problem is, Jesus is bigger. However severe your sin is, Christ suffered on Calvary for it. 
There is nothing outside the application of the word of God. Verse 9, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. As believers, I hope in Jesus' name the spirit of God lives on the inside of each and every one of us. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ, a sense of belonging. The believer is controlled by the indwelling of the spirit of God. When we have Christ in our life, when we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we're not in control. We are led by the Spirit. We walk in the Spirit. We sing in the Spirit. We praise in the Spirit. We pray in the Spirit. We serve in the Spirit. We're sealed by the Spirit. We're given access to God by the Spirit. And we stand in the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's powerful. That's powerful. Power up in the name of Jesus. The test of faith in the believer's life is the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is there, change will occur. Change will occur. The way you think about things, the way you do things, the way you approach things, the way you react to things. It makes a difference if you have the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of you. Your perspective changes. Everything changes in the name of Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Amen, amen. And there is peace. You know, you, you, um, you think about this. You have all this chaos going on and all of this turmoil going on in your life. And as believers, you know, for a split second, we kind of react to it. But then we remember the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of us. And our reactions are different. The way we respond to things are different. We don't freak out because we know the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. We don't have to. Amen? Praise the Lord. The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. So the spirit is alive because of righteousness. So what that means to me is that I don't want to walk around just dead. Alive is what we're supposed to be in the name of Jesus. Alive when we worship. Alive when we praise him. Alive when we pray. Alive when we speak into the lives of others. Alive when we come and clean the church. Because there's life in the name of Jesus. The sign of the spirit is life. The life of Christ being lived out in and through us. I want to make sure that people know that I have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of me. I don't want people to have to guess that the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of me. Because if they have to guess whether or not the Spirit is on the inside of me, then Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> what kind of life does a Spirit-filled Christian live? Verse 10 says, and this is out of the CE, CEV, Contemporary English Version, but Christ lives in you. That's you, Marlene. Christ lives in you. That's you, Derek Thomas. That's you, Derek Terrell. Christ lives in us. So you are alive because God has accepted you. Doesn't matter what people think. It doesn't matter what people say. Doesn't matter how people treat you. God has accepted you even though your bodies must die because of your sins. The body of the believer will die, but we have inherited eternal life. So the old man is supposed to die, and the new man is resurrected, life. And the thing is, is that nothing can be resurrected if it doesn't die first, if it doesn't die first. So don't be over there trying to live your life in the world, one foot over here and the other over here, just ain't gonna work. The body still cries for what it wants, but righteousness, righteousness demands that the spirit rules. The more we die, the more we live. How about that? The more we die, the more we live. Verse 11 says, yet God raised Jesus to life. God's spirit now lives in you. 
and he will raise you to life by his spirit. God raised Jesus to life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you getting this? When you hear that, doesn't something just come alive on the inside of you? I got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of me. That's a pretty big deal. That's something to celebrate. That's something to thank God for. That's something to rejoice for in the name of Jesus. That same Holy Spirit now dwells on the inside of us. So what that means to me is that I'm not going to be walking around with my head hanging down with barely making it. I have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of me. So I want to represent and I want to represent well in the name of Jesus. See, the enemy will try to throw all kinds of things at you, on you, but what you can say to the enemy is that, get thee behind me, Satan. I have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of me. You can't win. We have the victory in Jesus' name. That same Holy Spirit will resurrect us from the deadness of sin. That same Holy Spirit will give us the power to live in Christ, free from sin, eyes free now, free from sin, free from anything that the enemy tries to throw at me. Are you living a life of freedom or are you just talking about it? Are you talking it but not walking it? I tell you what, if you talk the talk, you need to walk the walk. You are known by your fruit. People can tell if you say that you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, and then you're walking around like you're being controlled by the enemy, something's wrong with that picture. Life in the Spirit is a different quality of life than we can attain apart from the Spirit. We cannot attain that life apart from the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit in order to live the life of the Spirit. Amen? Why would a believer, why would we want to live the ordinary boring life of a dead sinner? when the exciting life, exciting in the miraculous power of God is open to us. Why would we want to? If you have a problem and you just can't seem to get there, come and talk to me. I want to pray for you. I want to speak life over you. I want to show you that God is no respecter of persons. What he does for me, he will do for you. That's who he is. Galatians 4, 6 says, because you are the sons, God sent the spirit of his son into the hearts, the spirit who calls Abba, Father. He's our father. Do you have that intimacy with him? In the power of the Holy Spirit, our Lord overcame temptation. He cast out demons and did other works of God. In the power of the, of the Holy Spirit, the early church continued the work of Jesus Christ. The book of Acts, we've been talking about the book of Acts. We've been diving into the book of Acts. The book of Acts contains one success story after another of how an is insignificant group of people turned the world right side up. Right side up, not upside down. Remember we talked about it last week, how the disciples went in one way, but when they were endued with the power of the Holy Spirit, they came out differently. They went in disciples, but they came out apostles. See, what happens is that when we allow the Holy Spirit to flood us, to come on the inside of us, to endue, empower us, then there's something that's different. We cannot be the same. We cannot have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us and we remain the same. It just ain't going to happen if truly the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. They were able to do, do so to turn it right side up because they made a proper response to the promise and the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's like having a gift, someone bringing you a gift and you never opening it. What good does it do you? As believers, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we are empowered with the Holy Spirit. We have access to the Holy Spirit. So I definitely don't want to live my life the same. Because what that means to me is that if I am living my life the same outside of what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do, outside of what God is telling me to do, outside of God directing me, 
leading me, guiding me, then I believe that what he did is in vain. What response have you made to the Holy Spirit? The question is not how Jesus did relate himself to the Holy Spirit or how did the early church treat the Holy Spirit or how do the other contemporary disciples of Christ relate to the Holy Spirit. The real question is, what have I done with the Holy Spirit? What have I done? I really want you to think about this, to pray about this, to process this, and when you leave today, that's your assignment. What have you done with the Holy Spirit? Are you representing him well? He's a person, you know. Because of a lack of understanding of what the scriptures teach concerning the Holy Spirit, many have avoided responding at all. Some are unaware of the presence of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6.19 Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. The scripture is very, very significant. If you've given your life over to Christ, we're not our own. We're not supposed to treat our bodies inappropriately because our bodies belong to him. You know, that scripture became very, very relevant in my life at a time when, I know most of you know that I struggled with um, anorexia. I was delivered from anorexia, and no matter how I went to the doctor, no matter how much therapy I had, no matter how I tried to not be anorexic, no matter how the pastor prayed over me, and he did pray over me, I had to get my mind right. I had to seek God. I had to allow the Holy Spirit to work and move in and through me. And it was this verse, do you know that your body is not your own? That made me realize that I wasn't just doing this to me, I was doing this to my Heavenly Father. That changed everything for me. And so that, what that means is that you don't just read the scripture, you apply the scripture. If you say you believe the scripture, then something will change. My life changed because of that, because of the word of God, because of the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of me. Something will change. You are known by your fruit. So don't tell me that you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you and you're living opposite. If it's opposition from the word of God, then something's wrong. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because the Holy Spirit is spirit and therefore invisible and intangible, some have not sensed or recognized his presence in their own life or in their own hearts or in the lives of others. Evidently, this was the case with some of the believers in the city of Corinth in Corinthians. They were making no positive response to the presence of the Holy Spirit who came to dwell within their hearts at the time of their conversion. The Apostle Paul informed them that the body of each believer has become the temple in which the Holy Spirit dwells. It kind of sheds a different light on things, doesn't it? It truly does. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? The first verse I quoted uh, on 6.19, 1 Corinthians 6.19, is talking about the individual body. But this scripture here is talking about the local church. It's talking about the local church. That's us. That means the Holy Spirit dwells here. This is holy ground. My prayer has always been that when people walk through those doors, when they walk through the doors, they walk, they come in, and they feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Well, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit is so thick, so heavy, that it knocks you out. The Holy Spirit. That's my prayer. Because sometimes it's going to take some knockout for us to realize it that the Holy Spirit lives and dwells on the inside of us. 619 is the individual Christian body. 316 is the church, the local church. But in Ephesians 2, 20 through 21, it is the universal church. Amen? So you may want to write that down so that God can reveal to you the difference and how he want to speak that to you. So 1 Corinthians 619, 
1 Corinthians 3.16 and Ephesians 2, 20 through 21. You got that? If one does not recognize the presence of the Holy Spirit, it goes without saying that a positive and proper response is zero, zilch, nada. Some have quenched the Holy Spirit. I really, truly hope in the name of Jesus that you guys are getting this, allowing this to sink in your spirit. You will meditate on this because, you know, a lot of people, they come to church and they want to hear about Jesus. They want to hear about God, but they don't want to hear about the Holy Spirit. Well, if you hadn't heard about the Holy Spirit, you've come to the right place. The Holy Spirit lives and dwells here. Praise the Lord. And there's nothing that I can do without the leading and the power of the Holy Spirit. I couldn't be standing up here before you to speak the word of God without the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen? First Thessalonians 5.19 says, Do not quench the Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes into the heart of each believer to provide assurance of salvation and to reproduce within each believer the Spirit and the character of Jesus Christ. The fruit of the Spirit, you could read about that in Galatians 5. 22 through 23. Well, let me just read it for you. Because I know you want to know. Galatians 5. 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy. Peace. Forbearance. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. And self control. See, when we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, these qualities, we're supposed to have these qualities on the inside of us. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Not the fruits of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? We pour water on the divine fire that God is seeking to build within us when we fail to recognize his presence. And therefore, we make a negative response to the deep inward impulses that he creates within us. We choke the life out of these heavenly impulses. We prevent the Holy Spirit from accomplishing the divine purpose within us. Amen? This is a straight up tragedy. It's a straight-up tragedy, y'all, for the individual involved, and it deprives others of the blessings God could give them through us. Some are grieving the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4.30, we talked about this last week, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. If we live by the mind of the flesh, and if we refuse to let the Holy Spirit bring cleansing, purity, and power into our lives, we can assume that we bring grief to the sweet Spirit of God who has come to dwell within us. The scriptures tell us that when our Lord looked down upon the city of Jerusalem, I preached about that not very long ago, he shed tears of disappointment and grief for his people. Is it possible that the Holy Spirit who dwells within each of us is grieving today because of our lack of faith or faithfulness? Does he grieve because we have been silent when he wanted to speak through us? Is he grieving? Because he said to go over there and witness to this person over there. Go over there and tell this person about me. But no, God, I don't want to. I don't feel like it. Are we grieving his spirit? Are we failing to communicate the truth about God's love and mercy? Are we representing him and representing him well? Are we giving people mercy? Are we giving them grace? You know, that same grace that God gives us? Is he grieved because we have contaminated the temple in which he dwells by a life that compromises with the world? 
You know, sometimes what we do is we listen to man and we forfeit what God is telling us to do. So what that means is that we're glorifying man or we're glorifying problems and we're minimizing the one who came to die for us. We're minimizing the one who sent the Holy Spirit as a comforter, as a helper. I'm not minimizing the things that we go through. I'm not minimizing the struggle because I know the struggles are real. But I also know that Jesus is real. The Holy Spirit is real. God is real. Is he grieved because our hands are not yielded to the divine purpose for ministry of mercy to the suffering or to the unfortunate? Is he grieved? Are we grieving the Holy Spirit? But some have responded by a walk of faith and faithfulness. Galatians 5, 16 through 18 says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. See, you're in a spiritual battle here. It's not flesh and blood. You're in a spiritual battle. Because the more you want to do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do, the more the enemy is going to come after you. He's going to chase you down. But you know what? The blessings of God, they chase you down. And you overcome. You overcome. You speak to whatever it is that is not of God. And you tell it to go. It has no place in your life. Get thee behind me, Satan. In the name of Jesus, you have no place in our lives, in our circumstances, in our relationship, in our home, in our church. You have no place. And because of the Holy Spirit power that's on the inside of us, we can do that. We can speak to the mountain. We can speak to the things that are happening in our lives. We can use those mountains that once tried to block us. We can use those as stepping stones to get us over them. And I tell you what. If you can't get over, God will show you a way to get around it in the name of Jesus. But you got to have that intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You got to be able to hear what it is he's saying. You have to be able to not hear the voice of a stranger and to hear the voice of God. Verse 17, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. I tell you what, you know, the enemy, he knows when God has spoken something to you or placed something in your life or told you to do something. And that's when he comes and he comes harder. He comes harder because he's trying to prevent you from doing what God is telling you to do. Because you're already with him. If you're already with the enemy, you're already being controlled by the enemy He doesn't need you. He already has you. Amen? Amen. So I know some people tell me that I got saved and you led me to Christ and it seemed like my life just got harder and harder. Well, of course, duh. Now you have a reason for the enemy to go after you. He's there to bring you back. Bring you back to his side. And I tell you what, if you're not listening to the Holy Spirit and you're listening to the enemy, you are treading on dangerous territory. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. These individuals, the ones that walk by faith, the ones that walk in faith and faithfulness, these individuals have made progress in their journey from the mind of the flesh to the mind of Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? I don't think the way I used to think. I don't complain the way I used to complain. I don't judge the way I used to judge. I now know that I am not the one who judged, that he is. I now know that before I see the plank in someone's eye, that I have to look at the log in my eye. I know that. I think differently now. 
I know that I don't have time to be talking about what someone else is doing or not doing because that may forfeit me from hearing what God is telling me to do. These individuals have made progress in their journey from mind of flesh to mind of Jesus Christ. They have ceased living on the level in which their highest desire was to satisfy the flesh. They now live on a higher level in which they are seeking to bear the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. They recognize that eternity is involved in time. That how I live my life here on earth is going to determine where I am when I leave this earth. Amen? So yeah, we confess and we profess and we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and then we sit there and we wait till we get to heaven. Uh Uh-uh. That's not the way it works. There's work for us to do while we're here on earth. We are to represent him and to represent him well. They have caught the vision of what they can be, be like by cooperating with the Holy Spirit as he seeks to reproduce within them the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I let this mind be in me. I choose, I choose to have the mind of Christ. Some rejoice in the privilege of being filled with the Spirit. We talked about it last week. Be filled. That's a command. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. They are often bold, brave, and courageous. They're not fearful. Not saying that they don't have fear. I'm saying they're not fearful. But they realize that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. They're bold and courageous. They speak the word of God. They don't back down when someone says that you should not be talking about Jesus. Oh, I'm going to talk about him even more now. Thank you. Thank you. Remember the man that was sitting on the side of the road when he was calling out to Jesus and those people that were with him told him to be quiet and he got even louder? That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Because I tell you, we live in a fallen world. We live in a dark world. And we have to be bold for Jesus Christ. Because we want to see others come to Christ. We want to see others walk in what God has called them to do. That should be our desire. To bless others, but to glorify Him. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. They have a genuine concern and a spirit of generosity will cause them to share with the unfortunate beyond their real giving ability. You'll have the heart. You have the heart to do that. I think of, um, I think of someone here that has a desire. They're always wanting and desiring to help the unfortunate. They're always reaching out to help those that don't really know how to help themselves. They have a heart and a passion for the widows, for the single moms. I believe that God is very well pleased with that because it's not an act of selfishness, but selflessness. Their desire is to reach out to the lost, the hurting, the broken. For instance, here in Minnetonka and in the city of Hopkins, God has positioned us right here. There are people that are around us that are broken, that are lost, that are sick, that are hurting. And sometimes we get on our spiritual high hearts and we just walk in the church. What can God do for me? Okay, you guys can be mad at me, but I know you love me. (laughs) Amen, amen, amen. They are readily available to witness to the saving power of Jesus Christ. That's some power right there. When I, see, when I know that people are watching me, I want them to know that that is a powerhouse right there for Jesus. I think of, uh, just a side note, I think of a lady that came to hear me speak, and um, she had seen me, I guess, online. When she came in, the first thing that she said was, man, I love the way you preach. It's full of power, but I thought you were taller. <laughs> I had to laugh, but I remember something my grandma always told me, that dynamite is small, but it moves mountains. 
So with the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, we are powerful, powerful. He has given us that power. He has empowered us with the Holy Spirit, that power, that exousia power, that delegated influence and authority, that dunamis power, that dynamite power. Don't judge a book by its cover. Praise the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Amen. If we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, it doesn't matter how you look on the outside. What matters is what comes out from the inside. Yeah. Amen? Praise God. You are all endued with the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't let anyone tell you any differently. Don't back down when you're praying and you're praying in the name of Jesus and they say that you're causing division and you shouldn't pray in the name of Jesus. You Preach and pray louder in the name of Jesus. Because what we're trying to do is we're not trying to glorify us and sprinkle a little bit of Jesus on it. We are glorifying him in the name of Jesus. Amen? Praise the Lord. See, the Holy Spirit power is on the inside of me. That's what you get. Amen. How are you or how have you treated the Holy Spirit? That's a question for you. I'll give you a second to think about it. How have you treated the Holy Spirit? Are you afraid to recognize his presence within your heart? Are you afraid? Are you scared? Are you scared about what someone's going to say about you? Are you afraid that no one's going to come back through those doors because Pastor Satis preached on the Holy Spirit? Are you afraid? Are you shaking? Because you don't know anything about the Holy Spirit. Are you scared? Are you afraid to trust yourself to his purposes? Are you afraid that you may end up like me? <laughs> that the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you and you can't get them to shut up? You know, it's funny. Tim and I used to attend this church. I'm not going to say the name of the church, but the church was not Pentecostal. I'll put it that way. And we were just sitting there and we were praising the Lord. And instead of people looking up and praising the Lord, they were watching me. And I told Tim, I said, I know what that husband and wife are saying over there, what that husband is saying to his wife. And he goes, what? I said, he's probably telling his wife, I'm so glad she's not my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but praise God, praise God, I was able to glorify him because I wasn't there to please men. I was there to glorify Jesus. Amen? And that's what we're supposed to do. How have you treated the Holy Spirit? Are you afraid to trust yourself to his purposes? If so, your life will be barren and unfruitful as far as your spiritual productivity is concerned. Recognize the Holy Spirit's presence within your heart as one of God's greatest gifts. Respond to his leadership positively and completely and totally and genuinely. You will be surprised at what God will do in and through you if you make a proper response to the Holy Spirit. And as I land, as I land, I'll leave y'all with this. This is some real talk here. You listening? Barren or unfruitful, for real, are the lives of some who never recognize the presence of the Holy Spirit within. That's real talk. <laughs> Tragic, for real, is the one to hear the good news about the indwelling and then through fear or selfishness or some other reason neglect to respond to his abiding presence. If we want to experience the benefits of this good news, we need to recognize the person of the Holy Spirit as dwelling within our hearts. That's a wake up call, y'all. We need to respond to him with faith and joy and eagerness to cooperate with him as he seeks to work in and through us for the glory of God. We need to be glorifying him with our lives, with our actions. Amen. The Holy Spirit will help us to overcome, to overcome the evil within us and to resist the evil around us. Amen. 
the Holy Spirit will endue. That word endue means provide. Provide us with the spiritual energy that we need to do God's work in this world today. If we will but recognize him and respond to him. But on the other side of that, on the flip side of that, if we choose not to, we grieve him. We rob ourselves and we deprive the Father, our Heavenly Father, of the privilege of using us for his glory. I want to encourage you to recognize and respond to the good news concerning the Holy Spirit. Are you recognizing? You better recognize. Amen. Recognize. Recognize the Holy Spirit. He's a person. We can grieve him. We can hurt him. See, God loved us so much that he sent his son. His son walked this earth. But his son cannot be everywhere at all times. He could not be over there with Ruth and Ronnie and be over here with me at the same time. So what he did, he ascended to heaven and he left the Holy Spirit who is with us 365 24-7, every day, every hour, every minute, every second, we're never alone. His word says that I will never leave you or forsake you. He's with us, y'all. He's with us. He's with us to give us boldness, courage. He's with us to lift us up when we're falling down. I've fallen and I can't get up. Oh, yes, you can. You got the Holy Spirit power living on the inside of you. My brother, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. I believe that it's the Holy Spirit that brought you here today. I believe it's the Holy Spirit that places you on my heart and I just pray for you. Don't have to know what's going on, but what I do know is he said pray, so I'm to pray. I pray for you when you don't even know I'm praying. And then there's those times when I pray for you and I reach out to you and let you know that I'm praying. I knew that you would be back. I knew that you would be back because I'm going to be obedient to what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do. And I pray in the name of Jesus that he continues to cover you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I pray that even though you've fallen, if you've fallen, that he's there to lift you right back up. That's who our God is. That's what he wants for us. I believe in the name of Jesus that as we come together, we build each other up. I believe that as I stand there and preach to you and teach you, I believe that I am equipping the saints. You're not just coming for a message. It's not about just coming, listening, and then going out and doing the same thing over again. It's about applying the word of God. He said, do not just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. Those are not my words. So don't be saying, Pastor Zatis just wants us to do this. No, I'm quoting scripture. I'm quoting truth in the name of Jesus. I want to get us prepared and ready and positioned to do the things that God is calling us to do. I want us to not be thinking about me, me, me. And think about Jesus. What would Jesus do? Remember those old earrings and those necklaces? What would Jesus do? I still have one, y'all. Maybe I'll wear it next week. <laughs> we need to be reminded. That's why we come together. Do not forsake the assembling of the saints. That's in Hebrews 11, 10. Or 10, 25. Sorry about that. We come together to equip each other, to speak into each other's lives, to journey with each other, to walk with each other. Jenny, come here for a second, please. We lock arms. We link arms together. We walk. We speak into each other's lives. We realize that, yes, you're going through something. Yes, you're struggling. Yes, you have a problem. But guess what? I'm here to speak life over you. I'm here to cover you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I'm here to pray for you. I'm here to lift you up. I'm here to tell you that Jesus, God, is no respecter of persons, that what he does for me, he does for you. 
I'm here to let you know that, that that walk that you're walking, God is right there beside you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. I'm here to tell you that. But see, if I don't have the boldness to speak that, how would she ever know? How would she know that she's not alone? How would she know that God has placed someone in her life to speak life over her? How would she know if we're afraid? How would anyone know that if we see someone struggling, we walk straight past them when the Holy Spirit is saying, stop! Pray for them, speak into their lives. Are we so selfish? Are we so unconcerned that we can't come to a Wednesday night service or we can't come to a Sunday service because we think, well, you know what? I'm okay, I'm good. Well, what if your brother or your sister is not good? See, sometimes God leads us to church, not for us, but to speak into the lives of somebody else. I had to learn that. Because I tell you what, before the Holy Spirit got a hold of me, it was all about me. And I tell you what, that was not getting me anywhere. Because I tell you what, thinking about me and being selfish, it wasn't glorifying God. It wasn't glorifying Him. And that is my desire. My desire is to glorify my Heavenly Father. My desire is to glorify the one who came and died for me. Kind of changes things, doesn't it? Changes your perspective. Makes you look at things differently. I was sitting in a restaurant with a pastor. Yep, I said pastor. And the person came and they brought the wrong dish to this pastor. And this pastor blew up at this person. I said, wait a minute, what happened to the grace? What happened to the mercy? What happened to modeling Christ-like behavior? What happened to that? Sometimes we forget. And I tell you, I believe we forget because we're not truly, truly in the Word of God. We're not truly, truly listening. Because sometimes, and I'm not saying we don't have emotions. We have emotions. God gave us emotions, but we're not supposed to let emotions have us. What I'm saying is it gives us pause and cause to think and to pray before we react. Because you never know what a person is going through. You never know what a person is going through. So you're always to treat that person with love. Treat that person with love. That's what Jesus would do. So because we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, we can power up. We can level up. There's no excuse. No excuse. So I pray in the name of Jesus that this message has touched your heart. I pray in the name of Jesus that when you leave here, you will not leave the same way that you walked in. Because I tell you what, there's no way that you could sit under a message like this, led by the Holy Spirit, and remain the same. I tell you what, if you leave without being convicted by the Holy Spirit, it ain't because of the Holy Spirit. So I pray in the name of Jesus. Bow your heads with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that each and every person sitting under the sound of my voice, they know the boldness, the boldness that you have provided for them. They know, Father God, that they have been empowered, empowered with the Holy Spirit, that they can walk in the Spirit, they can be led by the Spirit, I pray, Father, that they are not allowing themselves to be robbed of everything that you have provided and given them in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I pray for each and every person from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, Father God. Do something. Do something amazing. Allow them to experience you, Holy Spirit, like they've never experienced you before. I pray blessings over them, Father. And I pray that they don't just leave here blessed, but they leave here changed, transformed, renewed. So I lift it up to you. Father, if anyone is sitting under the sound of my voice and they have not yet accepted you as their personal Lord and Savior, if they don't know you, Jesus, a relationship with you, not religion, but a relationship with you, 
I speak Acts 2.38 over them, Father, that they will repent, be baptized in water, and be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I pray this for them, Father God, because I know with all of this, what a life, what a life, a life that glorifies you. So I pray for anyone that's dealing with uh, pain in their bodies or any kind of sickness. I pray healing over them in the name of Jesus. Father, you sent your word and you healed them. I pray that by your stripes they are healed in the name of Jesus. I pray, Jehovah Rapha, you are our healer. I pray, Father, if anyone is lacking, I pray, Father God, that you will provide and supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Father, if anyone has lost peace, I pray, Jehovah Shalom, you are our peace. I pray that you give them peace, not the peace of the world, but the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard their hearts and their minds. I pray that you will keep them in perfect peace as their minds are stayed on you. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for healing. I'm talking psychological. I'm talking physical, emotional, spiritual. And Father God, I bind in the name of Jesus any addiction that anyone may have. I cast it out. I break the enemy's assignment in the name of Jesus. I speak healing over those that are addicted. And this just doesn't mean drugs, it can mean food, it can mean cigarettes, it can mean anything. I pray that they desire to want to serve you. I pray, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, that they realize that their bodies are not their own, but they are a temple of the Holy Spirit. So with that being said, just like me being delivered from anorexia, I pray that they recognize that once you give your life to Jesus, you are not your own. And I pray that if anyone is struggling with any of those things, that they realize that, recognize that, and that will help them. That will help you as it helped me. So, Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that your word has gone out and it has fallen on good ground. I lift it up to you right now. And I also pray, Father, that those that know you, that confess and profess to know you, if they're not quite living their lives the way they should be, I pray Acts 26 over them that they will turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God. Receive forgiveness of their sins and a place amongst those sanctified by faith in you, Father. So I thank you for it. I lift it up to you. And all God's children says in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord.